as we conclude, John, um, the subtitle of the, the, the book, it's called Cosmic Chemistry. The subtitle is Do God and Science Mix? In a nutshell, why do you think a reader can go away with from this, whether they be Christian or non-Christian, confident that actually they don't just mix, they're dependent upon each other in some way? I wrote the book in order to present both sides of the case, really, because I've taken the atheist case, if I put it that way, extremely seriously. What I wish to do is not to make people's minds up for them, but to give them insight into what is really going on at the highest levels, as best as I can, in this debate, so that they get a hold of certain basic things, so that they understand the caricatures of God that have been used to reject God, mm. a, delusion, a delusory God, so that they can understand the nature of scientific thinking, so that they're not fooled by not understanding what explanation is. And I have brought that evidence to bear, and I put it before them, and I say, make up your own mind. I think behind it all is the desire that so often people reject things that they don't like without considering them. And from a Christian perspective, I want to say, look, before you reject it, make sure you know why you're doing that and read the evidence. I've tried to be fair to it. I've read these people. I've interacted with them all of my life. And so to speak, this is my word uh, to point out that when it's all assessed, I find that the explanation that makes most sense to me is in the beginning was the word. And I hope that perhaps people coming to see that may begin to see there might be reason to think about the bigger thing. And that is that the word became human and lived among us. But that's a story for another time. Thank you very much for talking to me, John. Thank you.